Hello everyone this is Gary from Fantastic Fundas and in this lecture we are going to talk about the rise of the left wing and as i said in the last lecture that the left wing was rising at this time after the cdm phase but what is the background in which this is happening and why is this happening and how is this happening and in what shape it happens uh, we'll answer all the questions now let's see the see um uh, the st national struggle is happening okay let me just put it here national struggle is happening and the st and there is also uh, a struggle for social economic emancipation of the country okay social economic emancipation one is political emancipation this is na national struggle for that and then is social economic emancipation of whom of the suppressed classes okay obviously they are they are the most concerned people for their social economic emancipation and and exploit it you know they and these two movement these two okay this one and this one they started coming together and that led to rise of what is called as the left wing right now two powerful people okay uh, parties which are associated uh, with this are number one is the communist party of india and number two is the congress uh, socialist party so we are going to talk in details about these two and two important leaders at this time are who are they one is of course uh, one is j l nehru jawahar lal nehru j l nehru and number two is the sc bose okay now th that's the third thing actually which is happening at this time we'll talk about these also right but it's not just that our socio economic political struggle had combined to become the left led to the rise of the story of the left wing there is more to it then what is that thing what what can be can you think of uh, think of it okay so if if you can if you can think of it wonderful if you cannot let me tell you that is called as russian revolution and it happened on 7 november 1917 this russian revolution well, you know this thing story right that that there was something called bolshevik party in russia it was overthrown by lenin okay and uh, uh, sorry a uh, bolshevik party was led by lenin i'm sorry bolshevik it was led by lenin and they overthrew the tsarist regime tsarist you can think of uh, some people who were suppressing people and during the formation and they, they were formed what is called as together they formed what is called as the uh, socialist state okay ussr uh, was formed right now this regime electrified the colonial world everyone was like we can also renounce the imperial rights if, if the, these russians can they can fight the might of tsar then what can we not do it so it gave a lesson to the indians that you know Uh, the, and the, and because of this a uh, marxism uh, so, you know uh, uh, mainly followed by the bolshevik party was the peer attraction to the people okay and number 10 that was one thing right and number last thing was at this time only and how was it manifested through the rise of the uh, trade unionism this was happening uh, okay so how is this happening now i have answered you why okay but how is this going to happen now in india very easy what are the reasons for how it spread the socialism see first of all you understand why is why it spread the few reasons i've discussed more reason in why are youngsters are unhappy with ncm cdm okay ncm cdm uh, that could not yield exact result and people are unhappy with gandhi also at this time gandhi and policy people were unhappy with the swarajist program also and there was the great depression of 1930s okay we draw attention to marxism socialism okay that is how it was going on anyway but at this time you know uh, there were uh, how how this was spreading the, among these reasons okay there were books there were magazines there were pamphlets there were associations okay books magazines pamphlets association what are these okay lot of factual information coming for you get ready for this for example over here there was a leader uh, called s a dange s a dange and he published a pamphlet the full name is shri pad amrit dange and he, he he published a pamphlet called as uh, gandhi versus lenin okay and he also uh, started the first socialist okay uh, first socialist weekly uh, which is known known as the the socialist the socialist these were started over here by s a dange and at this time there was another uh, important person his name is uh, muzaffar ahmed muzaffar ahmed he starts what is called as navyug nav yog okay and then there must be school nav yog public high school so many uh, you know districts in india have have this school nav yog public high schools and nothing of historical importance just a matter of incidence coincidence that no many so many schools name their school as this anyway and also you know uh, at this time there muhammad this uh, muhammad muzaffar ahmed is there and 
then there is another person called nazarul islam okay and uh, nazarul islam started a uh, journal at this time the name of which was uh, dhum ketu such a nice name dhum ketu one was navyug and dhum ketu and these two people put together okay uh, this uh, muzaffar ahmed and nazarul islam together you know uh, they also they started what is called as langal l a n g a l together they started this thing called as langal now and this person muzaffar ahmed okay let me just change the color for sake of convenience uh, muzaffar ahmed okay muzaffar ahmed he also uh, uh, was part of the organization or of the, of the group that organized the labor swaraj party of labor swaraj party of indian national congress okay and along with the, obviously there are few people involved in this labor swaraj party who were these people one was this muzaffar ahmed other this was this guy only nazarul islam okay these two people together they started langal and you can say that labor swaraj party both starting from l together they like to work on the l okay they had lot of love you can remember it this way right and then third third person over here uh, was hemant sarkar uh, in this okay and this was in 1925 just in case if you don't remember this i can tell you a formula to remember this you can say th think of it as you you just have to re remember the word hemant okay hemant h is for hemant and then muzaffar ahmed is there in the word and then uh, nazrul islam n is there in hemant so you can remember that also nazrul islam okay so hemant himself is there and muzaffar ahmed is there and nazrul islam is also there and if you uh, uh you know uh, the, the, okay anyway so th this is what was done by them okay and uh, not only this uh, these are all socialist organizations only okay and then after this there was also formation of uh, uh, what is called as uh, inqilab okay and uh, the, it, it was in punjab okay in punjab there was a uh, gulam hussain gulam hussain now he brought what is called as inqilab right and in madras uh, m singara valu he was quite active okay singara valu singara valu he was very active he brought this uh, labor kisan gadget okay i just cannot help this you will have to remember these names he and he also started, uh, started labor kisan party labor kisan party we just talked about uh, labor swaraj party if you remember that hemant okay h, h for hemant m is for zafar ahmed and for nazrul islam if the word letter hemant itself says all the name this band started uh, started labor kisan party okay and at this time only people like nehru jawaharlal nehru obviously i mean okay and and abos and chandrashekhar azad and bhagat singh all these people you know they were quite active towards working towards socialism obviously you know i'm talking about the earlier phase this is somewhere in 1930s before that actually you know uh, all bhagat singh dies in uh, on 23rd march i already talked to you about that right so within the congress okay and this is not just this outside thing but within congress if i talk about it within congress there were also many groups working uh, for example uh, there was a there was a left wing tendency under the leadership of uh, nehru you know nehru became the president of the congress in 1936 and 37 if you read nehru's autobiography you will find that in that he mentions that he was expecting to be the president of the congress in the 1936 and at this time he was in uh, switzerland for the treatment of his wife and who eventually died there only okay and nehru of course was there in 1929 also right anyway so uh, sc bose sc bose uh, if i talk about him SC see both these are two very important people uh, he was the president of the congress in 1938 and 1939 to so 36 37 38 39 in continuation this is happening okay so in continuation the person with the leftist trend are the head of the congress at this time okay 38 session is very important session we'll talk about this a little later this is haripura session 39 is the tripuri session tripuri tripuri is this place is near jabalpur some people also call it jabalpur session but this should be called as tripuri session and we'll talk about this how this was a controversy and here from the fight between gandhi and sort of a fight between gandhi and bose is also there at this time okay and uh, Cong congress socialist party is also formed we are going to talk about that also in detail right but let's talk about a little more about the uh, socialism in india and the jawaharlal nehru's advent on the nationalist scene of india okay we're talking about nehru over here so let me just uh, uh, talk to you a little more detail about uh, nehru now so we are talking about nehru and uh, his advent in indian scene and socialism there was a notion okay that freedom couldn't be defined in political terms but it also must have a socio economic content 
and so that means freedom is about not just about political but it is also about socio economic and this th this trend better put this thought became quite popular and it was mainly associated with nehru and in his book autobiography uh, uh, in his book's autobiography and glimpses of the world history he repeatedly propagated the idea of socialism nehru was the president of congress as i said earlier in 1929 and also in 1930 and third after that in 36 and 37 okay we know these sessions okay these are uh, the L lahore and then lucknow and fazpur session this is lucknow session and this is fazpur session now nehru became interested in this social economic question uh, right in 1921 when he came in touch with the uh, peasant movement in uttar pradesh we've talked about this that how he got into touch with the peasant movement in uttar pradesh and in 1927 nehru attended the international conference against colonial oppression and imperialism at brussels okay so what is also known as the brussels conference and then in 1928 nehru joined uh, with sc bose to form what is called as the independence for india league okay independence for india league so th this is what they joined over the 1928 right and uh, for complete independence of course and a socialist revision of the economic structure of the country so there were two theme one was complete independence the socialistic revision of the whole country right now nehru was a, in fact nehru has dedicated a chapter in his autobiography where he is criticizing gandhi and for refusing to recognize the confluence of classes for preaching harmony among the exploiters and the exploited gandhi had the idea that we should have between the person who is exploiter and the person who is getting exploited even they should develop harmony and live together after resolving their dispute it's a very noble thought but nehru criticized it okay and nehru but might keep in mind one thing that nehru did not separate himself from congress in fact he brought the he he thought that he would reform the congress from within and bring the change in the congress and make it uh, with the leftist tendency okay in and in in 1936 this session at lucknow over here uh, you know what happens that uh, in presidential co address nehru urges the congress to accept socialism as its goal and to bring itself closer to peasantry and the working class so he focuses on adopting a socialism at his go as his goal over here right and as congress to get closer to peasantry and working class so this you know nehru uh, uh, nehru felt that this was the best way uh, uh, of uh, uh, you know weaning uh, of weaning away of muslims from communalism okay and he also uh, was the person when a resolution on fr and economic policy was passed by karachi session we read this in earlier okay rajendra prasad com uh, composed it okay so he was uh, he, uh, by it was also uh, on the urging okay who urged the, that thing it was also urging on the jawahar lal nehru we did this in the earlier lecture okay so that was pretty much about nehru but then at now uh, the next person over important trend over here regarding as i told earlier one was the nehru and bose we'll talk about bose a little later then uh, we'll talk about now cpi the communist party of india communist party of india how was this formed in the whole story it was formed by shri m n roy okay shri m n roy manbendranath roy who is also known as narendranath bhattacharya ji man m n roy you know he along with lenin they helped in evolving the communist international policy towards the colony so he is the person he and lenin because of which we have leftist trend in the colonies and many people seven such indians you know they under uh, the leadership of the m n roy they met in tashkent tashkent in in 1920 and over the they you know they set up the communist party of india now it is set up in 1920 over here there is some but official announcement official group which comes is in the 1924 only which is little later than this okay and after 20 there were many other communist forms in india okay and many after 1920 okay what happens that after 1920 uh, many communist groups in india many groups and all these groups get together in 1925 uh, at at kanpur okay at uh, kanpur this 2024 or 25 i believe right so uh, and they founded what is all india organization under the name of the communist party of india this was the real party over here and this was the, at this time the leader of this party of the communist party of india who was the leader of this this party the, the it was under the leadership of the person called as satya bhakt satya bhakt in earlier lecture also one of the lectures i have named this he was the president of this okay and uh, 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 satya bhakt and sorry he was the uh, main leader okay and the presidentship at this time of this was under singar velu whom i just named a few minutes back also singar velu uh, was the person okay and they, what was their objective at this time the objective of the 
uh, CPI that was formed over here it was freedom from British rule number one is a freedom uh, from British rule number two is uh, reorganization of the society on the basis of the redistribution uh, common ownership of the controls on uh, means of production in hands of society and community okay redistribution or what is uh, uh, socialism you can just simply call it okay and CPI it called its member okay number three is CPI they said call it member to join the Congress and reform the party form a left wing within the party reform the party okay actually what is happening that this person he was of the view that communist movement must be independent of any other movement number one and should have a participation of worker and peasant in fact he also established a, a training school as to train frontier tribes okay training school was formed by them training a school was formed uh, for them by, by okay uh, by them so that for the revolt uh, and and they were tried actually for in what is known as called as the Peshawar conspiracy case uh, in in 1922-23 this was happening right anyway so uh, as I, I just said that there were many groups formed let me just talk about these many other groups that were formed at this time okay many groups I said okay what were these groups formed what uh, I, I'll talk about them now right uh, okay, I'll have to clear the screen for this many groups. Let me not change the color so that you remember that many groups were formed And what are these groups uh, for example main form of political work at this time was carried on by the peasants and the workers party Okay workers party and, uh, pa uh, and the peasant and the first labor uh, Party was organized over here. It was called as the uh, labor uh, Swaraj Swaraj labor Swaraj party Okay, and this was of INC only and this was uh, organized by few people for example it was organized by you can actually uh, think of only Hemant only uh, I have already named him Hemant is there Muzaffar Ahmed is there and Nazrul Islam is there uh, right you, I hope you remember Muzaffar Ahmed Navyog and Nazrul Islam along with him he put there together they brought Langal and all the story that I just mentioned to you just a few minutes back right Dhoom Ketu was brought by Nazrul Islam that way right now late 1926 let me just change color this because this is not quite clear uh, in, in, uh, in 1926 uh, uh, what happens that Congress Labour Party is formed in Bombay okay Congress Labour Party this is Labour Swaraj Party and this is the Congress Labour Party where is this this is in Bombay number two is there Kirti Kisan Party Kirti Kisan parties were quite popular in Punjab and in 1928 at this time I'm talking about the leftist trend how it is growing parallelly all these provincial you know groups that were being made they were together organized into what is called as the workers and peasants party okay they're just two P's not the third P worker and the peasant party so Nehru welcomed the efforts of WPP in Congress he said okay you are welcome in Congress whatever you are doing and and WPP played important role okay let's talk let me talk to you about WPP now uh, WPP workers and the peasant party huh so what happens is that this uh, first of all they, they were welcomed right then WPP played important role in enabling the communists uh, to get a strong position in working class because of the worker and the peasant party they could form a base hold in the work uh, in the working class number two is that it was very active in Bombay and Punjab as I said you know Bombay they formed this what is called, called as a Congress a Congress Labour Party and in Punjab there were Kirti Kisan Sabhas so that shows they were very active over there and with many journals for example they brought the journal called Kranti and they also brought a journal called uh, Mehnat Kush okay I'm not sure of the spelling Mehnat Kush Kush something like that and with focus on the abolition of the exploitative system right and number three is they were talking about for example uh, uh, Sohan Singh Josh is an important person over here Sohan Singh Josh he was an uh, the leader of the worker uh, peasant peasant party in Calcutta at this time number four is that CPI had a strong link with the trade union okay for example they had a trade uh, trade links uh, trade link of CPI with with whom number one uh, number a is uh, railway workshop worker okay railway workshop workers they and they together they did the, the strike also this was in 1927 at Khadakpur this was a railway okay workshop and number two is the uh, textile market okay if it is textile it has to be in Ahmedabad uh, oh, sorry it was in Bombay and in those you know strikes important role was and in all these strikes that are happening over here important role is played by a very important name which is known as uh, Girna Girni Kamgar, uh, okay. Girni Kamgar. Let me just write it here. Uh, Girni Kamgar. 
important role was played and which was you know uh, the, this union actually the, uh, uh, the was democratically elected and grass from grassroots okay workers union it was uh, being organized right so this is how the communism is spreading but uh, okay now we are left with subhash chandar bose i'll talk to you that in in, in a little while you know uh, pro probably in the next lecture only or may maybe in the this one let me just see that uh, according to the time left now we are going to talk about the fall of communism now uh, there were two main reasons actually number one is that there was severe repression by the british government and there were series of conspiracy ca conspiracy cases and they were sentenced to long imprisonment and for example uh, if you talk about uh, let's say march uh, 1929 to 32 ha huh? radical political and trade union activists they were arrested right in fact there were three britishers also who were arrested you can remember their name by the by this mobile phone over here okay i'll just make it easy for you to remember this right and this is your mobile phone and this is your signal over here this is your mobile phone so wh what are their name one is the hutchinson okay and this mobile company this is this mobile is of philips philips right and you can remember their names by uh, and third person was over, over here was ben bradley okay so you can just remember this figure this will help you remember the things easily uh, who are the three very important people right one is the philip spratt and the hutchinson lester hutchinson and ben bradley these three people were there right now they were to support trade unions new new unionist movement in india and 32 people were put to put on trial together what in what is known as the uh, meerut conspiracy case meerut uh, conspiracy case and after this um, the defense of these people you know it was taken the, these people over here in this case it was taken by uh, uh, leaders like uh, nehru and ansari and uh, chagla mc mc chagla okay and these speeches were made while defense was carried on uh, you know to the in the they were printed in the newspapers and government wanted basically to isolate the communist what was the government strategy to isolate the communist from the main nationalist movement which had got united after a great difficulty if you remember i started this lecture for by telling you that social economic political movement was getting united and government wanted to isolate this thing, this thing they just wanted to break this thing only that this was being done over here okay or and then you know at this time government succeeded in depriving the leadership communist movement leadership of its uh, uh, of the of, uh, of the communist movement of its main leadership at this time so communist resorted to they they resorted to what is called a sectarian politics and 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 the leftist deviation uh, was being now broken and the communist broke up with the inc at this time okay so communist and inc they also get divided at this time and they declared that inc is a party of burgeous burgeous is the uh, the rich class the capitalist the merchant the rich people and nehru and bose they were also criticized they were also uh, uh, nehru and uh, bose were declared as the uh, you know agents of the burgeous and in 1931 it so happened that gandhi irwin pact was described by communist as a betrayal of nationalism okay and wpp the, the worker and peasant parties also started getting dissolved and finally you know and in 1934 it finally so happened that government declared cpi itself as illegal government declared cpi illegal this is this this is how it so all happened okay now but then in spite of this downfall the cpi movement uh, you know the, the there was still some coins survival of the communist movement during this phase and why was that phase happening over here now i'll just talk to you about that okay what are the reasons because please understand that all these people even though they had conflict with congress number one is that they refused to separate themselves from the cdm they did take part in cpm as the cdm number 2 is that the socialist and the communist ideas they kept on spreading so the ideas were now spreading number 3 is that pc joshi okay communist party was organized by them pc joshi he was a important leader over here and the theoretical basis and the political basis for change in political uh, com communal co communist politics was given okay theoretical basis of the communist politics po politics was changed at this time and that was given by what is called as a uh, dat bradley thesis dat bradley thesis yeah they are the same people that we just talked about and bradley is ben bradley so uh, that bradley it said that the Cong national congress could play a great part and a foremost part in the working of realizing the 
anti imperialist people's front okay so they they were trying to reconciliate with the congress through what is called as the bradley thesis and the attitude of the communist toward the congress had started changing after the uh, change in uh, after the that Bradley thesis and now they were calling on its member to join the Congress that is how things are moving on okay now um, in the in this background okay uh, in this background comes uh, over here what is known as the Congress Socialist Party we have talked about CPI we talked about Nehru we still are yet to do regarding leftist and about the SC boss we'll talk about and now we're going to talk about Congress uh, Socialist party okay congress socialist party congress socialist party what is happening in this uh actually this congress socialist party this movement for its formation you know it started in jails only when people were in jail 1930 31 and then from 1932 to 34 it was by congressmen who were disenchanted with the gandhian philosophy uh, and strategy and leadership and ideology and jails you know ab jail mein kya kare you're sitting idle in jail do something what do you do you study books you know and what do they study marxism socialist ideas why because they were very popular at that time you must be aware of what is happening in the world we have seen russian revolution also so in jail they studied this and they were in disagreement with the communist party of india also so they formed what is called as the congress socialist party rather than this thing and there were a lot of members in this party also and who are these members i'll just name few of them for you okay uh, so who are these members uh, this was formed in basically uh, 1934 only okay and um, it was formed in bombay 1934 october this was formed who were the main leader number one leader was a jay prakash narayan number one number two uh, he uh, you know he wrote uh, he wrote books like uh, probably book or whatever it was he wrote why socialism he explains that and he was also the uh, secretary of this uh, congress socialist party and then there was acharya narendra dev and okay and uh, uh, he was the president of the congress socialist party number three at this time very important person was um, Acharya Narendra Dev was very active in NCM also, if you remember. No, he, you know, he's quite a, a veteran in fighting Britishers. And then there was <coughs> Minnu Masani was there. <coughs> and then after that uh, there were so many other people. For example, there was uh, Yusuf Mehrali. Mehrali. And uh, number five, there was uh, Ram Manohar Lohia was there. He was also active from here. And they and, and the first session of the Congress Socialist Party, the first session of this first uh, session. Now, this first session, it was held in Bombay, as I told you, where it was founded in 1934 only. Right. And the president at this time, this thing over here, I'm talking about, it was uh, Dr. Uh, Sampurnanand. Sampurnanand okay now uh, basically they all agreed on five basic uh, propositions uh, this congress socialist party all of them all the leaders over here they agreed on five proposition what are those proposition i'll just name five proposition what are those number one is uh, primary struggle india of india was the national struggle and nationalism was necessary to socialism so nationalism is necessary only then you can have socialism number one number two number two is socialists must work inside the congress and it was the primary body fighting for the national struggle so we you have to fight within the congress number three is they must uh, you know give congress and the nationalist movement a socialist direction so number three is get involved in the congress and give it a socialist direction number four for objectives to be achieved uh, uh, you know they must organize the workers and peasants in their class organization so organization of worker and peasant was there number five they would call each other comrades and keep on stick on to the policy of the socialism at that time right so they basically when they entered the congress now as i told you they, they said that so congress has to be made socialist when they entered the congress over here i'm just explaining you this part uh what what they did was uh they, uh, they 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 change the congress in two ma method one was the in the ideological sense what do you mean by ideological sense that uh, gradual by gradual persuasion of the congressmen to adopt socialistic pattern and more radical pro labor pro peasant okay so the keywords over here are the over here let me just change the color and write it here only number one is by persuasion and that's one and number two is a uh, pro labor and 
pro labor and then you know pro peasant okay pro peasant that's fun right now number two uh, one was that this was the ideological dimension of it number two, uh, the other dimension as i said is the organizational dimension in which the top leadership was to be displaced okay so the, over here they are talking about the uh, replacing the leadership in the congress and and this time only uh, a, a thing was given which is called as the uh, merit thesis merit thesis see communists they like, like to give a lot of theses okay that bradley thesis now this mirror thesis to bring the congress leadership from representing the burgeous class to the leadership of the socialism they kept on calling oh you are burgeous you are burgeous oh you are burgeous but you know we'll change you we'll change you we'll make you leadership with leadership of socialism because without you country cannot rise you are a burgeous without you country cannot rise without without you left cannot rise you are a burgeous they had this rat laga rakhi thi right so at this time there was no alternative in any case you know to gandhi's leadership so whenever there was a dispute between the socialists obviously they would have disputes because they were not in 100% agreement so socialist congress or congress socialist party or the uh, you know uh, uh, you know under the which was of course under nehru at that time all they always gave it to congress okay they because they knew that there is no other uh, uh, way out and they were also criticized right as they didn't lend this but these people communist and all they also didn't lend their support to sc bose in 1939 actually what had happened in the case of sc bose when sc bose had confrontation with gandhi ji okay and, and on who's to be the next president of the congress congress uh, gandhi wanted patta bi sitaramaiya to be the president and you know uh, patta bi patta bi lost and gandhi said it's my personal defeat but in any case the socialist people did not support him there was moral pressure on sc bose and he had to resign from there okay that was the little story of sc bose we'll talk about this story a little in a little little while okay so there were three ideologies i can say uh, which were being in play of the socialism at this time number one was the marxian number two was the fabianism and number three was the which was the current theory philosophy which was being support influenced by gandhian philosophy okay what is the marxian philosophy simple you know focuses on the class relation and societal conflict the idea is over here societal conflict this is not the right place to discuss the marxian concept because this more part of world history will talk there and marxian the fabian concept is very is it say that the uh, for socialism to be achieved it can be achieved through peaceful means through democracy also in the socialist ideas they cannot they need not necessarily be there's no need of uh, radical reforms uh, at that time okay and the, and the third was the gandhian philosophy which we have been discussing so far okay and uh, So at this time, S. C. Bose, this person over here, he founds the Forward Block also, Forward uh, Block, and this he does in 1939 after he was compelled from the uh, leadership, as I told you, uh, by uh, from the presidentship of the Congress. Okay. Anyway, we'll talk about him later. Now, communist who work outside any left wing group because there were a lot of communists, not just inside the working over here, they, they were outside also. For example, uh, there were uh, there was Hindustan. socialist republic association we have done done this already in detail and then there were also what is known as a group called trotskyist trotskyist is actually this is also form of socialism as trotskyism is the theory of marxism actually okay and it was as advocated by a person called as leon trotsky so uh, any particular concept is there okay and there were other people for example there was indulal yagnik uh, uh, this person was working outside uh, right he joined uh, uh, you know um, at kheda with patel right he was active with any basant also and he was all india kisan uh, movement ka part also anyway sir so he was such a person indulal jagni got discussed talked about him earlier also and then there was a swami uh, shehjanand swami shehjanand uh, saraswati uh, okay swami shehjanand saraswati and he works in all india kisan sir but everyone shared a common uh, political uh, program which enable them to work together after 1935 and that was to make socialism a, cur a current trend in the indian polit politics okay okay so now uh, before we move ahead i just missed one thing and that was few more aspects of the uh, congress socialist party you see the congress socialist party uh, yeah, it was uh, part of congress of course and uh, it uh, its programs included few things when for example to organize the workers and peasants uh, Uh, for their own upliftment number 1 is organize workers and peasants for their own upliftment as i said earlier also about the organization of them 
right few about about apart from those things and then they also wanted to promote uh, youth and the women organization this i earlier didn't just missed to say that and then to resist the british attempt of involving indians in any, any kind of imperialist war so indians should not be involved in war that was another aim and to refuse acceptance of piecemeal legislation uh, proposed by the britishers okay uh, piecemeal legislation right and then the desire of the congress socialist party was acceptance of the uh, program of the congress along with the develop the along with the side also development of a blueprint of the so socialist society in india okay so they wanted to transfer all the powers all power to the masses pr party the people number 6 is that the economic activity controlled by the state and number 7 is the so socialization of the key industry okay socialization of key industry and then redistribution of uh, land land uh, uh, among the people and then also adult franchise is to be used for elections so all these things were also part of the uh, congress socialist party if anything comes in paper you can get you know tick mark anything in your prelim exam which you can think related to socialism they we were talking about that number 10 let me just complete it for you for example they said there cannot be any discrimination on the by the state on the basis of the gender and religion so that that is a communist idea uh, so, a socialist idea not communist a socialist idea thus it can be said that the socialism and uh, and independence were the twin objectives uh, at this time okay and further for you know uh, the csp it got encouragement from nehru and subhash right so they were not part of the uh, congress socialist party as such okay i mean nehru and uh, sir and sc bose okay so at lucknow session uh, in 1936 nehru had many um, you know there were many members who were socialist as uh, as well as part of congress working committee and congress also accepted the agrarian program uh, by the fazpur session one of the reason that i just wanted to mention to you uh, about the fazpur session of 1936 where nehru was the head they they accepted uh, the agrarian uh, growth okay the the agrarian um, program agrarian let me just write it properly uh, agrarian program right so this was the this became part of the uh, official congress uh, from fazpur session of december 1936 it had like re idea like a reduction reduction of land revenue abolition of feudal levies and introduction of cooperative farming even okay now this is very typical uh, thing that came over here and that was a uh, cooperative farming over here from this session and then also a csp played a role in the formation of what is called as the all india all india kisan uh, congress and okay we will we'll talk about in the coming lecture in detail about all india kisan sabha also and they also supported the leadership of subhash chandra bose at haripura and tripuri right and though some of them didn't they are criticized for that right and congress socialist party to the uh, party okay this party took active part in quit india movement also and by or uh, by organizing underground activities they also opposed partition of india and termed it as surrender of nationalism before communalism they they they, they were in opposition of course they believed in hindu muslim unity which uh, uh, which have which have been sustained by fulfilling economic needs of the both the communities they believed that if the economic needs of the people are fulfilled then this is possible but after independence there were different groups and organizations coming into being such as krishak mazdoor uh, praja party let me just write uh, write it here krishak mazdoor praja party ya yeah, praja party and this was under acharya kriplani acharya kriplani ji so kriplani ke paas thi ye uh, uh, he was the head of this krishak mazdoor praja party so to propagate the ideas of uh, socialism at this time so that is how this was uh, going on now uh, regarding sc bose it will be it will take me few lectures before i talk about him i'll talk about him when i reach 1939 only not before that okay so it's just just a pending thing from le this lecture right anyway so what is the uh, but but then you know it was left successful it wasn't so successful as it should have been because socialist idea could not develop hegemony over the nationalist movement as was their idea so socialist uh, uh, idea right they, it could not get above the uh, you know or let's say not, not this it could, could not get above of the nationalist movement this was not happening right number one number two is that they fought congress on the wrong issue that is the there another problem they either trailed behind the leadership or they were isolated they did not have ideological or tactical flexibility they said whatever we say we fix stick to the, those ideas only we do not want any other kind other kind of ideas uh, to be executed uh, at this time okay 
and then they left blame congress that they were comprising with imperialism compromising with imperialism but the right wing had little difficulty in discharging that for example when it came to 1936 see left was saying you are uh, you know co co collaborating with imperialism this was their accusation but but the right for, for rightist i mean the congress was very easy for example in 1936 37 when the congress won on the issue of election and office acceptance which was seen as a compromise with imperialism but left for the congress within the, that's another th area where they are fighting number 2 is from 1939 to 42 the fight was in the issue of the initiation of mass struggle and gandhi's reluctance for that and congress agreed to gandhi for that number 3 is the issue of 1945 to 47 when left confronted the dominant congress leadership okay including nehru and molana azad the question of transfer of power uh, which were seen as a british imperialism last ditch effort to prolong their domination during all these whiles congress came back, back very strongly and the uh, accusation that the left you know uh, uh, the by the left that the right was favoring uh, british or uh, was wrong with the exception of nehru you know uh, everyone the whole of the left uh, they left the congress they they leave, left the congress the leadership and they call it as a leadership of the burgios now it it saw effort uh, you know to run the movement in disciplined manner and in putting restrictions they learned the value of the discipline that is the one of their achievements over here and but anyway they overestimated support among the masses uh, the, the left uh, felt that they are supported by whole of the masses but that was not true they overestimated their support and different left parties were not united so there was lack of unity and temperamental differences were there nehru and bose even you know nehru and bose they were bickering uh, publicly in 1939 about their different ideas and socialist and communists were now fighting each other so socialist versus communist it had grown into that idea but uh, all is not bad there were some good things also for example um, if you talk about the what is the impact of left impact of left it was not small it was pretty good because the workers and the peasant party was organized number 1 number 2 it said what was the impact on congress 33% of the votes were now impacted by left in fact in 1939 uh, sc bose defeated patta b sitarmayya on the presidential candidate of the congress because of this voting system only and for the first time the right wing within the congress ex accepted that the poverty and the misery of the indian people were the result not only of colonial administration but also the internal socio economic structure of indian society which needs to be transformed so for this for the first time this is being accepted that our socio economic structure is also responsible for the poverty of the people and then you know and then there was a, you know like karachi session we know this thing it was because of left only in karachi session 1931 that effort, that resolution on fr and economic upliftment of the policy was uh, adopted and then in 1936 at the fazpur session there was a resolution on economic policy and 1938 there was formation of the uh, national planning committee okay and all this uh, you know have been discussed in different chapters so no, don't worry about them now active role was also played by women over here that was another thing and csi C, C, cpi and csp they were set up that's a major achievement because cpi party still exists i'm not sure i don't know about what happened to csp though it might or might not be there you can always check it and share it in the comment section okay so that's how it went kept on going on uh, right the things didn't stop here in 1938 for example in 1945 also uh, the congress working committee they adopted a resolution recommending abolition of landlordism so that was in 1945 so these things this way things kept on going on and resolution after resolution was being passed okay and outside the uh, party also you know that at all talked about pc joshi and the foundation of congress socialist party all these people you know they were very active all these are the outcomes of the leftist trend the forward block formation and all india student federation and all india progressive writer association they were also from all india student federation and all india uh, progressive writer association so this is another important one this was formed in 1930s uh, which came into for uh, limelight okay and nehru was head of the all india bengal student conference i've already discussed uh, that with you okay so this was pretty much about uh, the uh, leftist trend okay and now in the in the next lecture i am going to talk to you about a few things for example uh, what is to be done okay because you see what has happened that after 1934 the movement overall had weakened up 
okay now what to do next this is this is question of strategic debate that how to fight britishers after this ab kare kya this must be the question in your mind it should be the question in your mind if you have understood the lectures well so far okay what to do from 1934 onwards we'll discuss this and then we'll also discuss this in meanwhile the third up because of the third rtc we, i i told you there came government of india act okay well we'll talk about the details of this act right and then after that we will i'll also talk about the various issues that of the debate that came on whether we should fight elections because in 1937 elections are also coming up whether to fight elections or not so that debate is also being discussed in the next lecture okay now quickly before i go i just have did you share this lecture ask yourself because you are getting it for free you are enjoying this right you are learning so much but are you doing your part are you sharing this lecture or are you clicking on the like button and finally you know if you want this video and all the future videos to come right into your email box then you will need to subscribe to us for this you will need to click over here right so that's all and thank you so much for watching this video